Hello and welcome to another edition of Currently in Quincy. I'm Joe Catalano. Today, Tina Cahill will be joining us to tell us about a walk coming up in Quincy this Sunday to celebrate people in recovery. First, though, we take a look at the weather and the news for you. Currently in Quincy, it's beautiful out there. Sunshine, it's 68 degrees right now. Today will turn out partly cloudy, pretty mild, though, with highs this afternoon into the low, perhaps mid-70s. Partly cloudy this evening, lows drop off into the upper 50s and a pretty nice uh, first weekend of October. Maybe a shower early tomorrow, but then a mix of sun and clouds. That should say 73, <laughs> not, not quite that warm tomorrow, not 83, but still in the low 70s. Nice day here on Sunday, lots of sunshine, a few clouds, a little cooler. Highs only in the low 60s and then we're cool and wet on Monday appropriately with rain and showers. Highs Monday only in the mid 60s. Partly sunny, 68 degrees in Quincy right now. Checking out the news for you today, the plans for an Adams Presidential Center here in Quincy are moving forward this week. The Board of Directors named Dr. Kurt Graham as president of the new center. And Graham currently heads up the Truman Presidential Library and Museum in Missouri. Previously, Graham directed the Church History Museum in Salt Lake City and the McCracken Research Library at the Buffalo Bill Center of the West in Wyoming. Graham was formerly a member of the history faculty at California State University. Quincy Mayor Thomas Koch says the city is in the process of taking the property for the new presidential center by eminent domain. It's, it's going well, it's moving. I know that um, we've talked about Adam Street and in the latest URDP we added the Planet Fitness properties, as, as well as the Terminology Office's potential takings. That's the time you have to list going forward um, the takings that we, uh, you know, in the past, as you know, with the other URDPs in Quincy Center, we had to list out the various properties that were potentially up for grabs for taking, which then allowed the development to move forward. So, so that was part of the process, including those properties that has not um, been a final decision made on that, but uh, it is potentially part of um, what will be hopefully the campus for this. So it, it's, uh, we're still looking at other locations. Uh, we're not limited to, the, to those two spots, Joe, but uh, we did have to include it in the RDP if we're going to move forward on that. Um, just part of the process, you know. Kurt Graham has a Ph.D. in American History from Brown University and a bachelor's and master's in English and American Studies from Brigham Young University. Graham will be part of a panel of speakers about President Adams on October 30th. It's being held at Quincy High School. Well, the first week after the recent 24-day shutdown of the MBTA's red line between Braintree and JFKU Mass., apparently is going well. Over 600 workers spent three weeks of round-the-clock work on 18 miles of track to eliminate over 30 speed restrictions and cut the round-trip travel time on that stretch of the red line by at least 24 minutes. The riders have indicated that the trip is now much quicker and smoother. The T also used the shutdown to make some major upgrades to the JFK, North Quincy, and Braintree stations. The T says it remains committed to eliminating all speed restrictions on all rapid transit lines by the end of this year. A longtime Quincy police officer recently retired. Officer Kent Yee retired last week after a 30-year career with the Quincy Police Department. Yee joined the Quincy Department in 1994 and was one of the first officers assigned to the newly created Community Policing Unit back in 1998. In 2008, he transferred back to regular patrol. Chief Mark Kennedy says Yee was the go-to officer for many younger patrol officers. In 2017, Yee was assigned to the K-9 Division and became a certified K-9 trainer. He attended the Needham Police Academy in 1987, was on the Newton Police Department until 1991, and then worked for the Boston College Police Department until he joined the Quincy Department. A large contingent of officers gave Yee a warm send-off during a roll call last week. Well, there are three new members of the Quincy College Board of Governors, Robert Chambers, George Hardiman, 
and David Mahoney, all recently appointed to succeed Greg Hanley, Dr. Thomas Fitzgerald, and nurse Carolyn O'Toole, whose terms expired. Chambers is a Quincy resident, works in administration at the Mass College of Art and Design in Boston. Hardiman lives in Easton and is CEO of Tremont Credit Union. And Mahoney is a Quincy resident and local attorney. The Quincy College Board has 13 members who serve up to 12-year terms. Well, you may have noticed there's a brand new pavilion at Faxon Park in Quincy. Ward 2 City Councilor Richard Ash says the Department of Natural Resources installed this pavilion this year, part of an overall improvement project at Faxon Park. Recently, Ash hosted a celebration at that new pavilion that featured food trucks, live entertainment, and family activities. It's our check of news for you today. Coming up, we chat with Tina Cahill from Recovered Souls about a special walk coming up this Sunday. That's next. Welcome back. An organization called Recovered Souls here in Quincy is hosting a special fundraising walk this coming Sunday up at Pageant Field. And uh, the director of Recovered Souls, Tina Cahill, is joining us to tell us about the organization and about the walk. Great to see you, Tina. Thanks you for too. coming Good over. Good morning. Thank yeah. you for having us. Oh, pleasure, as always. Me. Yeah. yeah. I, as I was speaking before the program, I had not heard of Recovered Souls until I got the announcement about the walk. And I said, yeah. gee, I wonder what that is. Let's, let's reach out to Tina and, yeah. and see how what that is and how she got involved. Um, so what's Recovered Souls? Well, Recovered Souls is a foundation that was founded in 2017 by um, some people who worked in the recovery field. Um, and at the time, um, before I joined them, I was working at Quincy College, so I had met with them to talk about um, offering some kind of services to help their clients um, navigate the college admissions pro process. And at that time, um, they were ready to kind of hand over the foundation, and I came in as the executive director um, in 2021. Um, so Recovered Souls is basically, it's a foundation that, what we like to say is, um, we help people achieve, maintain, and thrive in their recovery. We're not, we don't have any clinical you know, affiliation, we don't do any clinical work, okay. but what we do is try to help people, you know, what I like to say is that individuals treatment isn't always enough you know you can go through treatment you come out and then it's a f part of the recovery phase is trying to figure out how to maintain and be strong in your recovery and be able to um, move forward and thrive mm. you know and so what we like to do first you know what's really important for all people is housing and um, we ha have limited funds, so when we can do it, we help people with recovery home, you know, to get into a recovery home where they're in a safe, structured, um, clean environment. We work with uh, recovery homes that we've really vetted out and made sure that they offer people great support, peer support, um, have meetings during the week, make sure people are going to meetings, they're working, and um, you know, that's really important, right? We know that for all people. Uh, that you need a safe place to live. And especially when you're in recovery, um, sometimes you need some extra time to really get strong in your recovery, to feel good physically, emotionally, to be able to really succeed. Um, you know, we've helped mothers and fathers who have called us and said, I just can't go home yet. You mm -hmm. know, I want to be with my kids, I want to be with my husband or my wife, but it's, I'm not strong enough and yeah. I know that I'll relapse if I don't have more time in recovery. That's a difficult yeah. thing to admit, right, to yourself and, yeah. and then to somebody yeah. else, uh, but to be that self-aware that you know you're not ready yet. You're not ready. Yeah. And, and some people do go home yeah. and then they find that it's just not right, right. and they end up back in, in treatment or, you know, going back to a recovery home that they felt like was good for them. Yeah. Um, and that's really, really important. I really feel, and, and again, we really try to make sure we're working with recovery homes that are offering people what they need. Is it always perfect? Does it always work? Are people, you know, sometimes people will ask me, they said, well, what do you think? What's your success rate? I said, first of all, it's not our success rate, right? It's the success rate of the individual. But if that one individual can really grab a hold of their recovery, you're helping 
their parents, mm -hmm. their siblings, mm -hmm. their family, their friends, their colleagues, their community. It's one person has a ripple effect, right? Because addiction doesn't affect just that one person. Not right? at all. Yeah. And yeah. not at all. And and you know, we see families and, and kids that it if their mother or father is doing well, they're doing better. Sure. You know? Yeah. So so that's an important piece of what we do, which I think is really um, critical in helping people if they need more time in a, in a secure environment. Sure. But then I look at it and I, I said, you know, once I came into the um, foundation, I said, you know, what's the next step for people? A lot of times they maybe lost their job um, or they're working in a, in a, they call it a get well job, which where they're not making a lot of money, they don't want people to have too much stress and too much responsibility because mm -hmm. that can also trigger. But it's also, a lot of times not enough. Yes. And yeah. um, so what we try to do and what, what we've been doing is helping people with, now that we have the um, Mass Educate and Mass Reconnect, um, helping people to take advantage of the free college, yeah. community college certificates and, and degrees. And when I was working at the college, what I found was that people who were a little bit vulnerable would come in and say, we'd say, okay, now go to the second floor to financial aid, and then go do your paperwork at the, at, you know, at the registrar, yeah. and then go here, and they'd be like, yeah, yeah, okay, good, yeah, and then they'd leave. Oh, really? Because it's intimidating, oh, you know. The process. The process. Yeah. It's a big process, okay. especially the financial aid process and a lot of things. Well, you need a lot of documentation, right? A lot of forms to fill yeah. out. Uh, you yeah. Know, uh, folks and and to even rely if on. it's not a lot, yeah. even if for you and I it might not be, you know, it seems like it's an easy process. Yeah. For a lot of people, it's not. Mm -hmm. So we've added a component where we are helping people navigate that system. Okay. You know, if okay. I talk to someone, I'll say, okay, well, you're going to need your high school diploma. You're going to need your, you know, tax returns. You have to fill out this form. So we walk them through the steps. And I'd say probably eight out of ten times, once we get people on that track, they take off and okay. they're doing they really well. They just need a little hand holding they just to get need started. Some, yeah. yeah, it takes away some of that intimidation, yes. you know. Yeah. And I feel like that's a really good piece as well for what we do because yeah. now it gets people to a professional level hopefully where they can you know maintain a good lifestyle well, it puts you them know on the path, right? puts them on a path yeah. and then the third thing that we found was was kind of an interesting thing to help people with is some personal enrichment um, you know, um, we do we've done and we do fitness memberships mm. you know whereas we might bring someone to Planet Fitness and get them a yearly membership, which would cost the foundation maybe $300. But if someone's just making enough money to pay their rent, um, it's a big and chunk pay of some, money. it can be a big chunk of money. Yeah. And then, you know, I think sometimes people might say, you know, I'm doing all the right things. I just can't do anything extra. And then get frustrated and maybe um, not feel like they're doing as well as they, they slide, should. Slide back, perhaps. Yeah, maybe yeah. slide back, okay. you know. So um, I think these are things that we've been really able to um, nurture, mm. you know, put in place, and we find that we're getting some good success. We, we just finished a high set GED program, help people get their um, diplomas, school, which they need say, for yeah. work. They it's, need for it's a basic now. It, it's right? basic. Yeah. You need it for work. You need it to get into college. You need it for you know so many things. Yes, so yeah. so we just did that. And um, we're actually partnering with Quincy College right now. Um, they're running computers for the workplace, which we've run um, eight week, couple of eight week programs for mm -hmm. people's. The, the computers for the workplace really works on the um, Microsoft Office. Oh, sure. Um, and, yeah. and gets people you know, familiar with all those components, which is good for work, but it's also good for college yeah, or absolutely. for personal you know, benefits. So, um, we're offering scholarships to help people take part in that program as well. Excellent. So, yeah, these are the kinds of things we're doing. Is there an actual physical building for Recovered Souls? No, you? our no. office is at 1400 Hancock oh, okay. Street. And um, we do a lot of uh, partnerships with different, like the college. If yep. When we're running our, um, the high set GED, our, our own computers for the workplace courses, um, we asked and worked with uh, President Cristofaro to, to use some of their space. Sure. And, yeah. and the reason why I like using the college's um, facilities is because it gets people there mm -hmm. and comfortable with the building the and the setting, campus yeah. setting. And it, once they're done, it might intrigue them to look at yes. enrolling in some other of the skill training certificate programs. Not necessarily has to be a degree. That's right. And yeah. um, get them 
you know, um, familiar with the back and and being familiar to go there if they need to go. They kind you of know? already feel like a student, right? Yeah. As part of the, the yeah. community there. Yeah. I, I like doing that. I prefer, even if I had the space in our office to do it, yeah. I wouldn't. I think it's better to do it at, at the college. Yes, you know? yeah. yeah. So it's a, Recovered Souls is a, a, a 501c3 nonprofit, yes. right? nonprofit. Yeah. yeah. Seven years old now, something like that? Um, yeah, years? 2017, okay. but I took, I took over in 2021 with oh, okay. two of our board members. Um, we're actually growing the board now. Hmm. And um, when I came in, I kind of looked at everything they were doing, making sure all the, um, you know, all the business protocols and everything were mm -hmm. in place. Mm -hmm. and, then, um, and then trying to assess what really makes sense for them, um, for, the, for the foundation to be offering to um, people in the recovery world. Yeah. So, how did yeah. you yourself get involved? You know, what, what is it that drew you to it? Well, I went to them, you know, because I thought the um, college admissions process was something that people in recovery or anyone, like I said, vulnerable so populations. You saw them firsthand at the Quincy College. Yeah, right? and I would see them coming in. Yeah. So I went to um, the people who were running Recovered Souls at the time and also a treatment facility. Um, and said to them, you know, this might be a partnership where we can help your clients get into hmm. um, some kind of professional skill training. And um, we had had multiple conversations, and then at one point they said, you know, we, we really don't feel like we're um, running the foundation the way it should be run. Would you want to come and join it and, you know, kind of take it and see what you can do? Yeah. And so that's what happened. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, and would you say you've had success so far? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, it's very fulfilling. Um, I bet. I, I actually shared on um, my social media the other day. Yeah. I had a girl that I had met three years ago, helped her with sober living, helped her with her high set GED, helped her figure out what she wanted to do in her in a college setting she wanted to be a nurse wow, okay. so she texted me um, a couple of weeks ago yeah. and she said um, hey I just want to let you know I'm two classes away from taking the exam to enter my nursing program wow. um, I've been sober for three years uh, I think more she's working full-time she's taking her classes she's going to enroll in nursing and she said I want to thank you and recovered souls for, for getting me here. It's because of you. And, you know, we get one. You talk about rate of success. One text it's like 100% that. for that For that, for that her. Girl, right? I mean, yeah. every, everything we did, yeah. everything we could offer her, and we also helped her with the gym membership. Okay. okay. And um, so that right there is, it just shows, but, you know, people need to take advantage of the opportunities. It works both right. ways, right? right? I mean, they have to be open to the opportunities yeah. and be willing to put the work in to, to exactly. go through the process, and you have to be there to help them through right. that. Yeah, and, so and you know, we've had straight. people who um, have taken advantage of some of the opportunities and then just not fulfill them, yeah. you know, and drop out. So yeah. that's where it comes down to, um, you know, and that one girl, young woman, you know, Hey, I'm going to go home. I'm going to see my family for the first time yeah. in, in so much, you know, X amount of time. Yeah. So um, I bet that's you teared where, up. Oh, I got a <laughs> call from a from a, a man um, the other day. We helped him with some, um, you know, sober living recovery um, home mm. um, to get in. You know, typically we'll we'll help them with a couple of weeks to get them into the house, and then it's up to them. Yeah. Um, and he he literally cried and said thank you. You know, this is really, I want, life I want you to hear yeah. this. And we don't always get that, you know, right. we'll get a note well, every sure. now and then. Yeah. Um, and he was really thankful. And, you know, and, and I, what I say to people is, you know, be good to yourself. You know, going into recovery mm. and trying to, to become clean and sober is for you. Mm -hmm. You're not for anyone right now, mm -hmm. it's for you. Yep. And if you're good to yourself, good things will happen. And, and that's kind of where yeah. it goes. You know? How do you find your clients, Tina? How does that connection happen? Um, we, we've, so in the three years that I've been here, yeah. um, um, I've built some relationships with people that either run treatment centers, um, recovery homes, people in the community, okay. people who are out there. You know, when it's, it's, it's a multitude of different components that helps people. Mm. It can be individuals helping each other yes. in AA meetings, NA meetings. Um, people who are and work in treatment facilities, people who work in okay. um, the recovery homes. So I built relationships with people. Whenever I have a question, 
um, about something new that I'm coming across or a new recovery home or someone who calls me on something I have people that I can call and say hey what do you think about Check XYZ okay. and um, and they're people who have been involved for so many years that they can give me some good insight into the direction that we need to be going in um, which has been really really helpful yeah. and and that's you know it's a big it's a big issue in our community as Absolutely. we all know and um, so there's plenty of people out there who have the insight and understand what it's all about and how to navigate and that's been very helpful to me sure. and that's when I said when I first came in taking that first year or so to really learn what the need is who who we're helping how we can help and it, it took time to kind of figure all of that out and that's why we're kind of getting like we talked about a little bit earlier mm -hmm. getting a little bit out in the in the community yeah. a little more and, and yeah. highlighting what we do um, but prior to that, I, I needed to feel comfortable with what the mission was and what we were really doing. Sure. Yeah. Um, part of uh, that reach out is uh, a big fundraising walk yep. coming up on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, tell me about this. So we're having, on, on October 6th, we're gonna be running um, a recovery, Quincy Recovery Walk. We're gonna start up at Pageant Field, which is gorgeous. It's a beautiful setting. Um, the day is supposed to be beautiful. Yes, look good and that, yeah. um, it's a three mile loop that goes facts and, um, to Furnace Brook, uh, Quincy Shore Drive, mm -hmm. comes back around and mm -hmm. ends up at Pageant Field. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna, and what we wanna, wanna do is celebrate people in recovery. Okay. People who've really been able to get their recovery. Um, recognize people who work in recovery, who really give their life. I mean, these people are committed to helping others. And um, yeah, we have Dan Forrest, who runs um, a couple of recovery homes here in Quincy. Mm -hmm. Sherry Duggan, she runs, I think, four women's homes, um, recovery homes. Sarah O'Brien, who's been a great partner for me, she works with um, ARC Behavioral Health oh, in sure. Quincy, yep. and she's been a really great someone from the beginning who I've been able to um, tap into and who helps a lot of people. And then Eddie McGrath, and he um, runs Rockland Recovery. They also have an office here in Quincy mm -hmm. who has built a, a really good um, recovery treatment center. So. We're gonna recognize them, and then we're gonna take a minute just to uh, have a moment of intention for people who continue to struggle. Yes. Um, and then have this walk and come back to the field, and we'll have some refreshments, and it's free to, for, to the walkers. We've had some amazing um, sponsors. I'd, I'd be here for a, a while mentioning them all, but the two main sponsors we have is um, Eddie McGrath and Rockland Recovery, and Tom McFarland and the McFarland family um, our, our main event sponsors Super. for the day. Yeah. yeah. So. And folks, can they make a donation at this walk if they choose? They can so. donate. If okay. anyone wants to donate, you go to recoveredsouls.org yeah. and um, there's, you can donate online um, or send a check or whatever. There's, there's information on the website okay. for that. Um, but we'd love people just to come and enjoy the day and um, again, just have a day of celebration for people in recovery and recognition for those who Yeah, will you have some of the folks that have gone through the, uh, the programs yeah, there? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, I hope so. I mean, yeah, I think we're gonna have a lot of people there and, um, and, and the, their families. The, and their families yeah. and, and the people in the community. Sure, so, yeah. yeah, it should be great. Do you find that um, your work with the, with the Quincy, on the Quincy School Committee with the Quincy Public Schools helps you in this role? Yeah, I yeah. think, you know, one of the things that I thought about when I was on the, as, as a school committee member, yeah. Um, and I was listening to, um, we have um, Mara Papil who runs the, emo you know, the guidance department and we talk a lot about emotional um, health and helping students. Um, I think that, you know, schools are different today. Mm. It's not just about academics and t treating kids with their emotional issues is really important and I think that that is part of what some people who struggle with addiction um, have issues that you know they maybe have experienced as younger individuals, and I think the work that we're doing in the schools, um, again, maybe doesn't help everyone. Yeah. But if we can help some kids figure out how to manage their emotions and their tendencies and the issues that have come their way, it might help them to not have issues later. Not self-medicate, right? Yeah, uh, or, you or know, not make some poor choices. Exactly. Uh, when they get older. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. and I think that's a big part. And we didn't yeah. have that growing up as much, you know. Oh right. Yeah. No, you no. just <laughs> went to school, and that's it. Um, so it seems like it's a lot for the schools, and it is a lot. Yes. And I, I said to Mara one one day, you know. I don't envy the work that you do because of its complexity, 
but I thank you for the work that you do because of its complexity. Exactly. You know, right, yeah. and and if we help these kids before they get to a point where they're in crisis, I think that's um, where where we should be making some changes. Sure. So. Um, you mentioned uh, you're trying to expand the the board, so yes. should folks reach out to you if, if they If anyone interest? is okay. interested in joining the board, um, definitely reach out to me. We okay. have two new members coming on, which is great. Yep. And um, yeah, expand what we're doing and hopefully get some good direction and keep on growing. Yeah, and come by this Sunday and uh, take part yes. in the walk, right? Yes, would love that. Love to meet you there. How many folks expect? I don't know. <laughs> Last year was our first year. We had maybe 50 people, but the weather wasn't great. Uh, yes. and, and we had a great day. It was, yeah. it was great. Um, I think with the weather being better today and we've been having some pretty good outreach um so i don't know double that okay. maybe more all right so <laughs> we'll see what it, happens hopefully it'll be fun yeah thanks for stopping by great thank to you talk for to you. having me You're very i welcome. really appreciate our it. pleasure thank we you hope we uh, helped uh, your missions just a little bit here thanks joe speaking of the weather just enough time to check the forecast for you for the rest of the day today it looks really nice lots of sunshine mild temperatures in the low 70s this afternoon uh, low 50s this evening and for tomorrow we'll have a mix of sun and clouds maybe a morning shower otherwise partly sunny in the low 70s a little cooler for the walk on sunday but still very pleasant with highs in the lower 60s and then a cool and damp very appropriately for a monday with a high in the mid 60s thanks again to tina cahill for joining us today from recovered souls thanks thank to you. our crew thank you for watching monday here in the show quincy animal shelter president sandra signs stopping by they've got a lot going on in october we'll learn all about it meantime please visit our website q8tv.org our latest programs are there there's news information video on demand live streaming much more for all of us here at QATV, I'm Joe Catalano. Have a great weekend.